So it's Tuesday morning and uh, we've got now four days uh, to get the transporter uh, airbags fitted. Uh, I think our plan for today is to uh, start with the front struts, uh, get these out. Uh, we've already sprayed some WD-40 on some of the bigger bolts uh, just to help loosen those off a little bit. Uh, need to get to the top of the strut to get the top mount off. Uh, that, I mean, there's bolts uh, accessible from the engine bay, scuttle panel needs to come off a little bit to access those bolts. And then hopefully this does not give us too much trouble um, so that we can fit the new gear. So time's ticking and uh, we need to get this project done for Friday in between getting everything else done, which we normally do. So let's get going. to 10 uh, we've been on this a couple of hours now and uh, just a little update uh, amongst the interruptions and phone calls and customers turning up dropping off vehicles uh, this is where we stand uh, the strut is out uh, the hub is out and now what I saw on the video uh, from Transporter HQ's uh, YouTube videos before I started this, this bit, this sits upside down actually, this is the bottom of the, the hub and the strut comes out this side and goes to the top of the arch, the wheel arch. This little bit here actually acts as a stopper um, for the bottom of the strut. So, right, bottom of the strut goes into the bottom, into the top of this hole and is stopped by this, um, this little lip here. Now what I saw the guys at Transport HQ do is, is um, basically grind this off so that if we need to we can we can lower the new strut further into into this um into the hub assembly uh, so that we can get lower um if we want i'm not sure whether we're going to need to at this point of time but it's nice to know that we could do that if we wanted to uh, also what i saw on their video was that you use the the factory top mounts otherwise you end up with um either squeaking or knocking or rattling I don't know which, I don't really want to find out, um, so we're going to do that. And along the way we've had to sacrifice a 32mm um, socket to the, to the hub nut. Now this hub nut I'm told, or what I've seen, is a self-locking, self-tightening hub nut. Um, and it's sort of narrower on the top end of it, as it then rather than the bottom. So as it goes on, it, it's basically tightens itself on because it's narrow at the top and at the bottom. So, um, I'm told because of that, you need to replace these anyway, or from what I've seen, you need to replace these anyway, so we're going to be getting two new hub nuts uh, from a local supplier, I suppose. Uh, the, uh, if I show you, you know, where my torch is, and I don't know if this is going to be light enough, but uh, this, the anti-roll bar drop links are pretty mullered. So I'm going to be replacing those whilst we're here. Everything with the drive shaft looks good. The gaiters, CV boots uh, look good. We've just got the, the caliper and brake assembly hanging at the moment whilst everything is out. Uh, everything's looking good up there. Top of the strut is removed via uh, a nut top of the strut which sits underneath the scuttle so yeah I guess the plan for today is to have all the all the old stuff removed so all the struts all the old springs need to get those removed maybe fit up tomorrow and then mess about with the airlines and the electrical so yeah plenty to do it's 10 o'clock hello and welcome to Wednesday uh, of our transporter airbag air ride project. It is currently 11 a.m. Uh, we have the best part of three more days on this uh, on this project. Apologies for the noisy background but we are in a working workshop um, so hopefully that noise will stop shortly. Uh, just giving you guys an update on where we are at. Ah right, slightly quieter now. Um, if that wasn't if you didn't hear what I said earlier, 
because of the noise in the background. Uh, we are on day three of our uh, airbag transporter project. Um, it's currently 11.02 on Wednesday. Uh, this does need to be completed by Friday afternoon um, because I need it for Saturday morning. Uh, I do want to just have a little look underneath and then show you guys what has been done in the last few hours. Let's get some light on. So, we have the manifold um, mounted. Um, both the manifold and the compressor have been mounted uh, with rid riven up fittings um, going through the sheet metal. So we've got the manifold on the side. We've got the compressor mounted upside down. I have put a little bit of um, soundproofing uh, on the underside just to help minimize any noise traveling through to the cabin. It already does have rubber feet on there so that should help. Um, I have just noticed that that inlet I do need to put something in that inlet so I might need to drop that and put a 90 degree on that whatever that is. We've obviously got power uh, and earth to the compressor and then the braided hose is the airline that is going to point in the direction of the tank which as you saw yesterday is mounted um, still need to change that elbow to go to the top um, yeah obviously big change here is the rear struts and airbags are in and from what I can tell I'll probably be able to get away with a 90 degree elbow on the end of this um, water trap and that shouldn't foul the rear arm so that's looking good nothing on this side that is going to foul um, the strut has been fitted both top and bottom using the factory um, bolts new top mounts this is what we were waiting for yesterday which is why we didn't fit the airbags yesterday uh, and then the spacers at the bottom here uh, are included in the kit um, what else the front strut well, we've just changed the drop links as well. Um, you remember me telling you that the drop links are longer because there's more travel. The vehicle goes lower and therefore the drop links have to be longer. Uh, the rear hub, or rather the hub mod, which is basically grinding out a little bit of metal to allow the strut to sit slightly further uh, down the, uh, the assembly. Pinch bolts obviously have to go in. All this needs to be bolted back together. But I think within the next few hours, we're going to have all the hardware back on, which is exciting. And then it will be time to run all the electrics uh, and also the airlines to and from the manifold over to the tank. Um, this hole here, I think we're going to enlarge a little bit more. Originally, I thought the compressor was going to be going in this in this space here, but instead we put the manifold so electrical wires are going to run across and up um, and then airlines are going to run down this side as well using various fixings which i will show you as we go and then obviously this is just the manual drain which is going to sit as in the end it's going to sit up there um, don't need to access it too regularly but it is recommended that you drain the system on a fairly regular basis maybe monthly um, just to make sure that there's no moisture in the system or the tank. So yeah, we are looking pretty good. I think by the end of the day, if we get all the hardware fitted, then tomorrow uh, we can do electrical and hard lines. That's definitely going to spill over to Friday because that's a bit of a, um, a bit of a puzzle. I've just got one of the looms out um, just to sort of map it all out. Uh, this is the loom, basically that is the plug that fits onto the manifold. You've got a relay, you've got positive and negative that connects to the compressor. These little fittings here, if like we are fitting a 3H uh, kit, which is the, the height sensing kit, then these little rubber plugs come off and underneath that is a, uh, a plastic connector. Uh, I believe this is for a secondary compressor which we're not fitting so we're not going to be using that just going to blank that off and then running up to uh, live and negative and then ignition live this pink wire and then USB I think eventually connects to the electrical controller remote on the inside of the vehicle 
So, we can have some lunch. We have sausage egg sarnies. That's your Danny. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna crack on. See you in a bit. Hello again, and uh, welcome to this afternoon's installment. It is half past one on Wednesday, and after having fitted all of the um, airbags and springs and struts, etc., we've decided to put the original, well, not the original wheels, they're aftermarket wheels, but the wheels that the van came with back on the car just to trial fit everything, make sure nothing is catching or rubbing or when it's when it's dropped it's not um nothing's touching the the drive shafts or anything like that and happy to report so far we are looking good that is a very nice amount of drop on the front very nice amount of drop on the rear uh, we've had to put some blocks underneath the wheels at the moment because without it um the ramp doesn't actually go low enough um, to pull the arms out. Um, so we've had to put these blocks on in order to assist, just so we get a, a, a good idea or the best idea, the only way you're gonna get a good idea uh, of how low it will sit without um, without any air. So there's no air currently in the, in the bags. Um, they are fully empty. And the weight of the vehicle is sat on the struts, on the bags, compressing the bags. And at the moment, that is, I think, about as low as she's going to sit, which I'm quite happy with. Um, anything further. And up here, there is a, a little metal uh, bracket which attaches the wing to the inner arch lining. Any lower than this, and we would need to start fettling with arch linings, etc., which I don't really want to do. Um, and then also, this isn't the final fitment of uh, of the wheels. Uh, actually, these tires are coming off. These wheels going on a different set of wheels, uh, slightly wider wheels, actually. So we might not be able to get this low uh, without doing a little bit of modification. Um, but yeah, I am very happy with it at the moment. I'm going to take a bit of a break now and maybe this afternoon or before the end of the day hopefully i'm uh, going to get the airlines in and the power in and <laughs> <laughs> mcdonald's without me eh?